Does the Rode NT1 need phantom power? What is phantom power? How is it typically supplied? And where would you find it if you do need it for the Rode NT1 condenser microphone? I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative, and we put this video together to answer those questions for you. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, the microphone, the interface, the headphones, or anything like that, we do have links down in the description with current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you do get the best price possible if you are looking to purchase anything that you see in this video. So first of all, the quick answer is that yes, the Rode NT1 is a condenser microphone and all condenser microphones need 48 volts of phantom power in order to work correctly. Basically what happens is that you need to charge the back plate and that back plate detects movement from the diaphragm of the microphone which captures acoustic energy and between those two devices that's how you get an electric signal that goes down the XLR cable to your audio interface or to your audio mixer. Now what does this typically look like? Where would you find phantom power? Some microphones have a built-in slot for a battery to supply phantom power. The Rode NT1 is not one of those microphones. You do need to supply the phantom power over the XLR cable that is connected to the bottom of the Rode NT1. So typically you'll have an audio interface or an audio mixer that would supply that phantom power. You can see here on the SSL2 Plus there's a sign that says plus 48 volts. That's pretty typical for most audio mixers. Sometimes there'll be a little lightning bolt, sometimes it'll say phantom power, but that is where you would find it on all audio interfaces. Now some audio interfaces will just have a single button per channel. You can see here this is a two channel interface so it says plus 48 volts above each channel. Some audio mixers will have one global phantom power setting where you press it in and it'll supply phantom power to all the XLR microphones. The one downside of doing this is that sometimes phantom power can damage some types of microphones. We explained that condenser microphones require the phantom power. Dynamic microphones are mostly impartial to it. They can take it or leave it. It won't benefit them in any way, but it won't hurt them. But there's also ribbon microphones or unbalanced dynamic microphones where it could actually cause electric signal so the microphone will sound bad or it could damage the microphone depending on what you're doing. Now what happens if you turn phantom power off on something like the Rode NT1? Does it sound bad? Does it sound horrible? Or does it make no sound at all? Let's turn it off now to see what happens. As I'm sure you could hear absolutely nothing when I did that, the microphone does not work if you don't supply it with phantom power. It doesn't sound bad, it doesn't sound horrible, it literally will not work. You need to power this microphone. So do keep that in mind. The Rode NT1 does need 48 volts of phantom power. The good news is most manufactured audio interfaces or audio mixers have this option readily available. Sometimes it's per channel and sometimes it's a global setting. If it's a global setting, you do want to make sure that all the other microphones you have plugged in won't be hurt or damaged by the 48 volts of phantom power. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for the Rode NT1, the interface, the headphones, or anything like that, we do have links down in the description section below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.